Hello, my name's Erica Hughes and I'm a part of Data School Cohort 20. I'm going to be showing you how to make a jump plot today. Jump plots can be useful for visualizing sequences of events indicated by the checkpoints and the duration or volume between them represented by the lines. This is a relatively advanced chart, but the good news is that all the necessary calculations are readily available to us. And in learning to make this chart myself, I picked up some tips that will hopefully help you. So first things first, you need at least three key columns in your data, a unique identifier, a sequence of events and a measure of time or output between the events. In this example, I'll be using a mock data set, which you can download from my workbook on Tableau Public. The events here are our kilometer markers indicated by the split column. If your events are descriptive, be aware that you'll need to create a sequence column that matches each description to a numerical value that you can then use to sort your events. In this case, our unique identifier is the registration number. This allows us to create one line for each runner in our jump plot. The last column determines the height of each jump. This is often a measure of how much time has passed between events, which allows you to identify particularly slow stages in your sequence. For example, these peaks here. So how do we actually build this chart? For that, we need to head over to Tableau. Having connected to the data in Tableau, the first thing we need to do is union it with itself. You can do this by dragging and dropping, or alternatively, you can right click and click Convert to Union, and then drag the data set into the box and click OK. I did discover that certain file types in Tableau actually don't support this union functionality. So if that's the case, please check the link for supported file types in the description. Before getting into the bulk of the calculations, just a few quick changes to make here. We want to rename this split column to split from and create a calculated field, which we're going to call split two. And this is going to take the split from field, and we're just going to add one. What we need to do now is set up a number of calculations that allow us to create those nice curves between the points. There are two pages of calculations like this with the name of the calculation, the description, and then the calculation itself. I recommend pausing the video to copy these over into your workbook or downloading my workbook from Tableau Public and you can copy and paste the calculations from there. The only field that's not included in these calculations is the Bezier value bin field. In order to create this bin field, um, let's head over into a sheet and we can see here our Bezier value field. All you have to do is right click, go down to create and then bins. You want to set the size of the bin to one and name it however you like. On this second page, we've got a number of calculations, but a lot of them are formatted in a very similar way. The key purpose of each of these is outlined on this page. And then beyond that, it's just a question of copying them into your own workbook. One last thing to note about these calculations is that a lot of them are table calculations and you want to make sure to set those up correctly in order for them to work once you bring them into the view. Wherever you see the blue default table calculation text in the bottom right hand corner, you should click on that text and follow the steps as they're outlined here. I'll show you how to do this with one of the fields now, but make sure you do it with every field where the option is available. So jumping back into a sheet here, I'm just going to click on the index function and edit. That blue text is there. If I click on that and I want to go to the advanced settings, move path over to the right hand side first by clicking on this arrow and then the Bezier value bin underneath it. And then the restarting every in this final drop down, we want to make sure that it is set to path. And that's it. We're ready to build our jump plot. So if I open up a new sheet, the first thing I'm going to do is just to filter down to a single registration number. So I'm just going to select one at random. 
For the remaining steps, I do recommend you follow the same order that I'm going to use. Otherwise, you might get some fields turning red and it might look like an error, but it should all work if you follow these steps. Start off by bringing the Bezier value bin field onto the rows. Right click on the field and go down to the show missing values option and make sure that that is ticked. The next step is to bring path onto detail and then I'm going to bring Bezier X onto the columns and Bezier Y onto the rows. Head over to the marks card next and change the mark type from automatic to line and then bring the bin field down onto the path shelf. So we've got our curve sorted, but we might also want circles for each of our checkpoints. To do that, I'm going to duplicate the Bezier Y field, which is on rows, by holding the control key and dragging it over before dropping it. And then I'm going to right click and select dual axis. Just to be sure, I'm also going to synchronize the axis. And then I'm going to go over to the second copy on my marks card. I'm going to remove the path and the Bezier value bin. And instead, I'm going to bring the node name onto detail. Change this from a line type to a circle type. And I'm going to bring the node name onto the label. Just a few minor formatting points. I can make the circles much larger and then center the label to get those numbers in the middle of it and maybe make them a bit larger. And there we have a finished jump plot for one of our hypothetical runners in our data set. If we wanted to compare two different runners, I could go to my filter, edit the filter and select another random value. And then to make it easier to differentiate visually, I could also bring registration number onto color there. And then we can adjust the dimensions. Another thing you could do is rather than having two lines on one plot, you could bring the registration number onto columns or you could bring the registration number onto rows. So once you've got your curves plotted, there is some flexibility about how you actually go and display them depending on the analysis that you're trying to do. So now it's over to you to choose what fits best with your data. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you've picked up a few tips to help you create your own jump plots. For more information or some different examples of how jump plots can be used, there will be resources in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my colleague Ruth's video on how to make a schema ball.